What is the metaverse? An easy explanation for anyone. The metaverse has become a massive buzzword. In this video, I'm going to explain everything you need to know about what it is. Interest in persistent shared virtual worlds has grown in recent years. A key player is Facebook, whose founder Mark Zuckerberg has said building a metaverse will be a realization of an idea he had and was interested in even before he started on social networking. At the same time, Microsoft have, has announced that it is working on building an enterprise metaverse. But what does it really mean? Metaverses as a concept have existed for some time now. Digital shared universes where we can take on whatever personality we want or work together on collaborative projects. They haven't always been depicted as good things. The term was first used in Neil Stevenson's cyberpunk novel Snow Crash, um, where it is a place where people went to escape the dreary totalitarian reality of the real world they live in. In the Matrix movies, it is somewhere machines put us after we've become their slaves so they can use us to generate electricity. Perhaps not the first ideas you would want Silicon Valley to take inspiration from when it comes to their own visions of the future. However, it's clearly a concept that we've been building towards since the emergence of the internet, social media, virtual reality and early attempts at creating shared digital environments such as Second Life. Zuckerberg has described his conception of the metaverse as an internet you are inside of rather than just looking at, which gives us some clues about how he's approaching it. The reason we are having serious conversations about metaverses now is that several key technology trends have reached a level of maturity where they will be up for the task. One of these is certainly virtual reality. Facebook has invested heavily in VR since acquiring headset manufacturer Oculus in 2014. It has made no secret of the fact that it doesn't see the future of VR as being confined to the walled garden of gaming and education environments where it's most commonly found today. Instead, the eventual goal is fusing VR's ability to create virtual environments with the power of social media to create shared online spaces. This has been tried before. There are plenty of VR apps that allow socializing with friends, for example. But within a metaverse, the difference is that users won't necessarily be limited to, narrow, to a narrow range of functionality that the app has been created for, chatting or playing a game together, for example. Instead, players should be able to virtually do anything they might want to do. The key here is building simulated worlds that model as much of our environment and reality as possible. A bit like the world created in the science fiction adventure film Ready Player One. For example, walking onto a VR tennis court and picking up tennis records is already perfectly possible for two players to play a, a game of VR tennis as seen in a number of VR video games today. What if they don't want to play tennis though? They might decide that they could have more fun chasing each other around the court trying to bash each other's avatars with their records or digging up the tennis court and building a basket, basket, basketball court instead or just leaving the court and going to watch a concert or do some work in the virtual office. A key feature of the metaverse is that it should cater for emergent user behavior rather than being constrained or built for one specific purpose like VR tennis simulation or collaborative working environments like Slack or Teams. Metaverses don't need to be limited to one platform as long as there's shared continuous experience. Your metaverse life might take you from immersive VR environments to 3D environments rendered on a conventional flat screen to 2D uh, applications 
on your mobile phone, depending on what you want to do. The important factor is that there's a continuity between activities and environments in terms of the user experience and avatar you control. Everyone seems to agree that avatars will be a core part of the metaverse experience. To fit with Zuckerberg's vision of being in the environment, there has to be some form of digital avatar of you for others to interact with. On Facebook and other social media platforms, your profile picture acts as your avatar. In a metaverse, it might be a 3D representation of you. In a gaming or fantasy metaverse environment, it might be anything you can imagine. But an important principle is that this avatar, or some element of it, will be able to move across and between different areas of the metaverse and be recognizable as you, no matter what you're doing or what platform you're using. It isn't just improvements to technology that mean the idea of the metaverse is moving closer to reality. Since the start of the pandemic, many people have increasingly found themselves living their lives online. We've become increasingly used to working, shopping and socializing digitally. So the idea of bringing all of these activities together in one seamless digital environment is not as much of a leap as you as would have seemed just a few years ago. But these changes bring societal challenges too. The shift to online living has undeniably enabled a lot of activity that can be damaging or unhealthy from identity theft and fraud to trolling and abuse. There's also a danger that real life inequalities, such as the wealth divide, will be replicated inside the metaverse. Immersive 3D environments require a lot of computing power to generate, meaning that those with less budget to spend on headsets and computer equipment might have a worse experience. This could end up having a negative impact on society if, for example, companies made hiring decisions based on a person's presence in the metaverse or if it becomes a channel for the delivery of education, training, or even dating opportunities. So how far away are we from the metaverse? The companies speaking seriously about creating metaverses are all positioning it as an aspiration for the future. For now, it mainly serves as a concept model for ways that existing online environments, such as social media or work-based environments, such as NVIDIA's Omniverse, can become more immersive and more deeply integrated into everyone's life. Merging virtual reality with social networking is likely to be the first step. Facebook has recently spoken extensively about its plan to do this and says that it, that it expects this to become a real, reality within the next five years. However, it's clear that there are still a lot of problems that need to be worked through before we are ready to move our lives entirely online. While we may currently be used to carrying out many activities, shopping, entertainment, socializing and working in digital environments, we aren't quite at the stage, technologically speaking, or as a society where we are ready to do the same with the bits that join all of them together. For now, there are opportunities to get a bite-sized taste of what a meta metaverse experience might feel like. Epic Games has experimented with expanding the borders of its Fortnite gaming universe to include social events and concerts, most recently featuring Ariana Grande. Some people simply consider the metaverse to be the next generation of the internet. What online will look like when two 2D screens become eventually redundant, superseded by headsets or even lenses that project images directly onto our retinas. The truth is still very much up in the air. No one knows for sure what the architecture or the rules will be when connected immersive environments become our online home. But with the biggest names in the world of tech racing to sell us on their vision, we can expect growing excitement around the concept. If you would like to learn more about the rise of this virtual and augmented reality, you might like to check out my latest book, Extended Reality in Practice, 100 plus amazing ways virtual, augmented and mixed reality are changing our businesses and society.